Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to validate email addresses. I'm going to show you how to set up a validation rule to verify that your users are entering proper email addresses in your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Wade in San Francisco, California, one of my Platinum members. Wade says, I just watched your video on input masks. It was very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any way to set up an input mask for an email address? I've Googled a few things, but nothing seems to work. Thanks. Well, Wade, unfortunately, input masks are usually designed for things that are a little more structured and rigid than email addresses. And for those of you who don't know what an input mask is, I got a video on it. There's the link right there. You'll also find it down in the description below the video. Go watch that if you don't know what an input mask is. Now, input masks are good for things like phone numbers, social security numbers, zip codes, things like that. Yes, there are some tricks you can play with them. In fact, I've got a video that I put together uh, showing you how to put together input masks of varying lengths. You can play a little trick if you're doing, for example, a zip code, right? United States is five digits, whereas Canada is six digits. So you can play a little trick there, but that's about the extent of it. An email address can be wide and varied and has all kinds of different rules associated with it. So an input mask really isn't the best thing to use. What you want to use is a validation rule. Now, again, I've got a whole other video on how to use validation rules. There's a link. I'll put a link down below. You can click on it in the description below the video. You can set up validation rules in your tables. For example, you could say the credit limit must be below $2,000. You can set up a validation rule saying that it has to be greater than or equal to zero and less than 2000. And if the user enters in something like negative five, they get a warning says the credit limit must be below $2,000 or whatever you want it to say. That's more along the lines of something we're going to use to validate email addresses. So go watch both of those videos right now if you've never used input masks or validation rules and then come on back and I'll show you some cool stuff. Now, Microsoft has on their website a pretty good formula to use for a validation rule for most email addresses. Okay, now there's a link to it right there in the bottom of the screen. All right, again, I'll put a link to this down below. You can just click on it to go get this if you want to. I'm going to walk you through how this works in just a minute, but be careful. Make sure you get a copy of it from Microsoft's site. While I was doing my research for this video, I did find a similar, similar formula on a couple of different sites and they were wrong. I don't know if someone just copied and pasted them wrong from Microsoft or they tried rewriting it themselves, but there were a couple that were just straight up wrong. And they, and they had pretty good Google placement too. They are one of the first couple sites I found. So get it straight from Microsoft. Let's take a look at this in a little more detail. Now here's the validation rule and here's what you put in for the formula. Now, there's a couple different parts to it. First, we're saying is null. All right, in other words, if they don't put an email address in, that's okay. We're not requiring them to enter one. But if they do enter one, all right, then it's got to match these rules. All right, so that's the or, and then we've got two parentheses out here for this whole thing. So what's this whole block say? Well, this is what it has to be like, and this is what it can't be like. All right, so there's like this and not like that. All right. Now, these are wildcard characters in here. Now, if you've never worked with wildcards before, guess what? I got a video for that too. All right, wildcard searches and like. I'll put a link to this one down below as well. You can click on this one. But this says this has to be like any number of characters, but at least one character, an at sign, all right? And then the same thing over here. Any number of characters, but at least one character, a period, and then the same thing again. At least one character and any number of characters, and that forms the typical domain that we're used to seeing, right? The username at domain name. All right, this guy. Okay, you have to have at least one character out here, but any number of them. So you could have, well, the, the rule technically, and I'll get into this, there's a lot more rules that we'll talk about in the extended cut with the members. Technically, that can only be 64 characters long, okay? But again, whoever has a 64 character username. Then there's the at and then the domain name, right? 599cd.com, accesslearningzone.com, whatever. So that's this part, all right? And... 
it can't be like this. It can't have a square bracket, either one, a comma, or a semicolon. There are more disallowed characters. Those are the ones that are most popular that you'll see. Okay, there are other characters you can't use as well, according to most email services. But those are the ones that Microsoft decided to put in their formula, so we're going to stick with them for right now. Okay? Again, members, we'll talk more about this a little bit later. So where exactly do we put this? All right, let's go over to the database. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Don't worry if the version number isn't exactly the same. Someone mentioned it to me the other day. Yeah, sometimes I make little tiny upgrades. I think the one that's up on the web right now is 1.80. So I think I change a few little things. I know I changed the date format. But anyways, so here's our customer form and here's the email address. Okay. Now, you can put a validation rule in the email address if you want to under data validation rule if you only want it to apply to this field here. I like to do it at the table level because then if you have anywhere else where that email address can possibly be entered, other forms, for example, then the, having a table level validation rule will cover all of those. So I'm going to go into my customer table, right click design view. All right, and this is the email address, and this is where you're going to put the validation rule. As a quick review, if you want to go to something like credit limit, okay, and put a validation rule in here of less than 5,000. Now, every time you put a credit limit value in here, it has to be less than 5,000. That's what I covered in the other video, okay? So for the email address, it's a lot more complicated. I'm going to go to Microsoft's website and grab this right here. Just copy this whole thing, right? Select all that text and copy it. Control C. I'll put a copy of this on my website too, just in case Microsoft sometimes takes their pages down and, you know, like old, uh, old articles and stuff they used to have. You'll find them still listed in Google results. You'll click on one and then it's like this page doesn't exist, but I'll put a copy of this on my website too. Then we'll come back over here to the email address field, go to the validation rule and control V, paste that right in there like that and hit tab. Okay, validation text is what do you want to appear in the message if the person validates or puts an invalid email address in, right? This is not a valid email. Okay, save it. Now, data integrity rules have changed. Existing data may not be valid for the new rules. You want to check it out? Yep, let's check it out. And everything passes. If you had an email address in the table that violated that rules, you'd get some error messages. I talk about those in the other videos. So let's close this down, go back to our customer form and try to put something in here that's not right. Let's get rid of that dot and hit tab. Oh, this is not a valid email address. Okay. All right. Put the dot back there. Let's say I didn't have a username. Nothing in front of the ampersand. Okay. Not a valid email address. All right. It, it seems like it's working pretty good so far. There we go. Now, this is Microsoft's recommended formula. It's okay. It'll catch... I'm going to say 90% of the bad email addresses people will enter, but it's not perfect. All right. It's not perfect. For example, if I came in here and put in here, John dot dot doe, it lets you, it lets that fly. That's technically against email rules. You can't have special characters like the dot repeat twice. There's a whole bunch of weird rules. I'll talk about them in detail in the extended cut certain characters like underscores are not allowed in domain names but that formula allows it the domain name can only have a dot for like the top level like dot whatever or a, or a hyphen okay so you could have in here like gm gm dash ail that's valid but an underscore isn't valid okay so if you want to learn more about the stuff and you want to catch 99.9% .9 .9 of all bad emails instead of just 90 in the extended cut for the members, we will build a custom function to check most of these crazy rules. Okay, we'll build an is valid email function. We'll check most of the common rules. I mean, there, there's a lot of weird esoteric ones that I'm not going to go through, but I'm going to we'll write a function that will catch most of them, and we'll allow a user bypass just in case you know the user says no, that that is my actual email address. All right, I'll show you how to set up a, a bypass for it as well. And if you want to learn more about input masks and validation rules in general, I cover them in my Access Beginner Level 3 class. That's on my website. You can find a link to it right there. You'll also find a link down below. But the extended cut is available for members, silver members and up. Get access to all of them. 
I don't know how they got, I got hundreds of them now. And gold members get access to my code vault and you can download the source code that I build in these databases and the database files themselves. So that's the extended cut for the members. And I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.